This tutorial will introduce you to iDigBio and its basic search functions. iDigBio stands for Integrated Digitized Bio Collections. The iDigBio specimen portal provides access to millions of records with information about both currently living and extinct species. Each record represents a physical specimen curated in a museum or other collecting institution in the United States and might include information about the specimen, such as when, where, and by whom it was collected, and the institution providing the data. The iDigBio homepage is busy and includes a lot of information aimed primarily at participating institutions. However, you may want to explore this page later if you plan to use iDigBio data for research. To get to the main search portal, Look for the green bar in the center of the page that says Search Portal. The portal navigation bar includes links to tutorials in the Learning Center, information about data publishers, and the collections they have published, research partnerships, and a feedback form if you have questions or comments about the portal. The iDigBio search page is split into three main sections, the search form at the top left, the map at the top right, and the mapped and the record search results table at the bottom. The search form provides for all of the fields necessary to complete full text and advanced exact match searches across iDigBio data. For quick searches in the search all field allows you to search a term across all fields of the data simultaneously. Let's enter Lynx Rufus here. This will return records that include the term Lynx Rufus in any field. <clears throat> so you can see that the top five taxa include something that is definitely not Lynx Rufus. If we select a record with that color, and take a look at it, we find that this organism is a parasitic worm found in a bobcat. And here's where you find the term Lynx rufus in the record. Returning to our search results, we can narrow them easily to see only records with media by clicking the must have media button. Media may include photos, sound recordings, videos, or PDF files. So you can see we don't have many records with media. It is also easy to include only those records with map coordinates. But be careful. Even these are prone to problems if the coordinates are entered incorrectly. As in the case of this specimen, which should have a latitude of 19.77 instead of minus 19.77. You can tell this because it says it's in Mexico, but it's currently in South America. So the minus there is putting it in the southern hemisphere. search records form, the filters tab allows you to provide exact text match and range searches for data fields. Multiple matches are available in text filters by creating a new line for each filter and there is also an autocomplete feature. We'll pick a few of these species. and narrow our search a bit. Each filter also allows matching of records by presence or absence of data. Fields can be added to the search from the drop-down list in the Add a Field box. And that's nice because you have the list of potential fields to choose from. If you need to reset the form, 
just select Reset at the top right of the search records form. The Mapping tab in Search Records allows you to specify geographic boundaries for records through either a circular or rectangular boundary. This feature will only include records with coordinate data. Boundaries can be specified by providing corner coordinates for a rectangle, such as this. And you can see we've narrowed down our search to this little rectangle. Or you can provide a, a latitude and longitude point and a radius to get a circle. Depending on what you enter in the map bounds, the map may automatically zoom in for you and you can use the buttons at the top right corner to zoom out if you need to. There's our data within the circle. These same controls are available right on the map in these buttons at the top left, which allow you to draw your circle or square rectangle. There is also an option at the very top of a camera to download an image of the current map you are looking at. This will download as a .png file. Back to the search records form, the sorting tab allows sorting of the table resources by up to six data fields. So these are the table at the bottom. The default for sort is by genus, specific epithet, and then date collected. In order to see the sort in action, we'll add the infraspecific epithet. And you do this through add a sort. Select what you want. But we can't see this sort field in the table below, so we need to add it. You can add columns to the table from the checkboxes that are provided in the Columns button. In fact, we'll go ahead and add genus and specific epithets so you can see the whole thing. To remove a sort field, all you have to do is select the minus next to it. So in this case, let's take out the date collected. Once you have the data you need, the Download tab allows you to obtain all of it in the form of a comma-separated value or CSV file. The Download tab is here in the Search Records form. An email address is required so that the link to the file can be sent to you in the event that you navigate away from the table. Search the build time provides an estimate of the time it will take to generate the file is right here. Once you select download, your download will appear in the available downloads box with a status of pending. When it is complete, the file will replace this status. CSV files can be opened with text edit editors or Excel. 
very large data sets may need to be imported into a database. Your data results may be viewed in other formats by using the tabs at the top of the results table. So we've got the table format, which will approximate the CSV file you'll get if you do a download. The label view displays the data as stylized specimen labels with a predetermined set of information and a thumbnail of an image if one is available. The media view only displays records with associated media. Each image is accompanied by a predetermined set of information displayed as a label under the image. The record set view provides a list of the institutions and their record sets that hold the specimens in the selected data set. This is useful for contact information if you are seeking additional data or to borrow specimens. Either on the map, in the list, or through the labels, you can view individual specimen records, which include a map, a media thumbnail, if applicable, and all of the data available through the iDig Bio portal. When you view an individual record, there are tabs when the, at the beginning of the data, and the first tab is what you see, which is the data. This is the data that's available through iDigBio about that specimen. The other tabs include flags. These are notices to the data provider that some fields have either been added by iDigBio or that they appear to have an error. And then finally, the raw data. So this is the actual data coming from the provider that has been unchanged by iDigBio. So both the flags and raw data can be helpful because um, you have to remember that this data is not perfect and you will probably need to carefully review it all before using it in any research project. These two tabs can help you figure out if things are incorrect or um, require some data cleanup. So that's basic searching in iDigBio. If you need help or further details, Check the Learning Center for other tutorials and happy searching!